Am I the a-hole for telling my father to live with his choices? I, 23 male, am the oldest of three. My younger sisters are 20 and 18. When I was 10, our father left our mom when she got sick. It really upset the family because it told us having a sick spouse wasn't something he could cope with, and it would have ended their marriage anyway. Our mom got better, and he told us it was because he left. He and I got into a huge fight about it because I knew it was BS. But a spouse leaving you doesn't mean you'll beat cancer. A couple of years after he left our mom, he remarried. Then when my father's wife was five months pregnant, we found out mom's cancer was back. It progressed quickly and she passed away four months later. The day before she died, our father's wife went into labor. He fought with us in staying with our mom because he wanted us with him. But he didn't want to leave his wife and missed the birth of their child. But we wanted to be with our mom, not her. I was 14 at the time. Our father showed up six hours after our mom died and told us it was time to come home, that there was a party we needed to be ready for the next day. His choices led us not wanting to live with him, and we all got out as soon as we could, much to his annoyance. My youngest sister leaving was the final straw for him, and he told me we had no right to walk away from our family, from our parents and younger siblings. I told him his wife was not our parent, and if he wanted to blame something, he should blame himself. And the choice is made. That is choosing to leave our mom because she was sick. Then lie about him being the reason she got better. And then choosing to fight his own leaving our mom when she was dying because he didn't want to leave his wife. And ultimately not being there for us during that is why we're here. And to say we shouldn't abandon him might be how he feels, but we feel very different. He told me she wouldn't have survived as long if he hadn't left her. He asked him why it wasn't his fault she died then. That if he could cure her once, why not again? That we both know it's bullcrap. Now, it's not just him that thinks I was an aid to him in that conversation. So do some of my aunts and uncles on that side. They always figured we were too hard on him for his choices, and that we should have embraced the new instead of being angry over the old. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. You are absolutely not the a-hole. Opie, please. Good lord. Please don't listen to your dad and some of those aunts and uncles. Your dad is a master manipulator. He's the opposite of support while you guys went through something so traumatic. Well done on you and your siblings pulling through. He is a manipulator, but he doesn't sound like a master, as it hasn't worked on his children. Death and sickness is great for showing family's true colors. I have so many family members who whine but family when trying to guilt you into helping them in some way or putting up with their bull. But when the stuff hits the fan... It's nothing but crickets on their end. To hell with those people. Not they all so much. Not they all. Bet the guy's looking for a babysitter for the younger sibs. As for the rest of that side of the family, I would cut them off too. Regardless of whether dad's a hollishness is by nature or nurture, they probably share it as well. Not they all. What? He abandoned his three children with a sick mom than expected his abandoned kids to leave their dying mother? I say WTF again. What a selfish douche knuckle. You are so clearly not day home, and your random extended family members criticizing your choices are most likely just saying crap like that to relieve their personal feelings of guilt and shame. They had years to help out and clearly didn't. So now they're feeling like a-holes. Keep on going the way you're going. You know you're right, and Reddit shall reconfirm. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for reacting badly on my sister-in-law when my nephew called me dad? I-29 male not sure if I maybe overreacted in this situation, but here it goes. My brother passed away in a boat accident, and sometime after that, my sister-in-law, his wife, found out she was pregnant with her first child. It was hard for her navigating her grief while pregnant, dealing with the fact that my brother will never know his son, and on top of all that, the reality of now being a single mom. My parents live in another country, and she doesn't talk to her folks much. So I started coming around a lot while she was pregnant. Bring her food, help with baby stuff and such. I was grieving too. It needed a company and it felt good knowing that I was helping out. After my nephew Charlie was born, I've been around way more, and he's become the most important person in my life and I love him. I still help out my sister-in-law with whatever she needs for him. Clothes, money, toys, baby food, you name it. Charlie's over a year old and is already talking. 
One that obviously caught me by surprise is when he said "dada" to me when I came over yesterday morning. And I corrected him, saying, "No, uncle." But I don't know. Guess he was stubborn. I confronted my sister-in-law on it, and she says they were reading a book together, and he got it in his head that I'm his dada. Not sure about that, but throughout the rest of the visit, he'd keep calling me that, and it would twist something in me. And sister-in-law wasn't doing anything to correct him. In fact, she'd encourage it. After she put him down for a nap, she asked me what's so wrong about him calling me that, and I sort of lost my temper. Didn't yell or anything, but what I said was because I'm not his dad, and I'm not gonna disrespect my brother like that. So why would you? My sister-in-law looked like she wanted to cry, and I decided to end the visit there. In my drive back, I got a text from her. She told me sorry for thinking I'd feel happy to call me that, and she'll make sure he won't do it again. That I just didn't have to be mean by throwing the death of my brother at her face. I've had some time to think. It was an emotional moment for me, so I'm not sure if maybe that way I reacted made me an a-hole, especially because I made her cry. Am I the a-hole? No a-holes here. It's a tough situation, and you are both getting through it best you can. Props to you for stepping up. No a-holes here, but Opie, you need to sit down and think about the long run here. What role do you want in your nephew's life moving forward? Are you dating anyone? What will your partner think when you get serious with one about your relationship with your nephew? Will you step back from your relationship with your nephew when you have children of your own? Will his mother pull him back from his relationship with you when she finds a new partner? You need to figure out what you want and what you're willing to do and be to this child. Then you need to sit down with your sister-in-law and clarify what she wants and expects as well. Do it now because your nephew is old enough to express an opinion, so he can't fudge it anymore. No a-holes here. I would just explain to her that he caught you off guard and you reacted poorly to the situation because you get emotional. It happens, and it sounds like everyone involved really love your brother. Not an a-hole. I don't think it's healthy that your sister-in-law was encouraging your nephew to call you Dada. I think you need to have a discussion, reminding her that your attentions are to be a good uncle to Charlie, not to replace your brother as a father or a husband. I hope I'm wrong, but it is possible that her grief is making her misinterpret your support and see it as something more. Next story: Am I the a-hole for not telling my older sister-in-law my son's name before he's born? My husband has two sisters. Jane is older and Emma's younger. He and I are expecting our second baby, and we already have his name decided. Jane knows this because she saw my husband pick up the custom name sticker we got for the nursery, and now she's dying to know the name. She asked my husband, and he told her we'd reveal all when babies here. Then she came to me and asked me, but I said no to giving her the name. The reason? When Emma had her son, she used the name Emma had mentioned when she was six months pregnant. Jane was also pregnant, a couple of months ahead of Emma. And when Jane's son was born, she used the name Emma had chosen. Same first and middle name, and also last. Emma ended up changing her son's name, and it really upset her. When my husband and I had our daughter, Jane went nuts over her name. She told us we had amazing taste, then joked that she wished she had a girl to use it on. My husband told her that wouldn't work anymore since we already had a child with a name. She just rolled her eyes at his response. Jane's due any day now with another baby, and I suspect she would use our son's name if we told her now. But she thinks I'm being too uptight, and should share the name since it's not a big deal, and can give her the chance to get something extra special for our son. I told her she doesn't need to get him anything; that anything she does want to buy can be purchased when he's here. Now she is really mad. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Also, troll her and tell her a false name. Okay, okay, but keep it a secret. Aloysius Bertrand Smith. She won't even know it's fake because either one, you can say you changed your mind, or two, she took the name, so you would have to change it anyway. Imagine sister-in-law's kid ending up with a super weird name because sister-in-law stole the fake baby name. Poor kid has to go through life with a name like Giuseppe Agamemnon Smith because his mom couldn't come up with the name herself. Not today, Hall. The fact she stole her sister's child name is wild. I would not tell her either. Sounds like she may be digging for another name to steal. That's my theory, especially given her reaction to my daughter's name and her using the name her sister had chosen. Not today, Hall. You need to update when you tell her a fake name. Let her steal it. 
And when she finds out your son has a way better name in the future, how mad she gets at you. She's fishing your son's name. Keep that door closed. Accidentally say it's when he's kicking you. Ouch. Thomas Gray, that hurts. Then look around as if you're making sure no one heard you say it. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for kicking a guest out of the house? Just for context, my girlfriend 24 female is the breadwinner in our household. I don't really make that much, but she has a stable job and her parents are loaded. So whenever it comes to big purchases, like our first home and car, etc., she handles it. I usually just try to buy the smaller necessities like household utilities and groceries. Obviously, I get teased and hassled about it from people we know once in a while. I really don't appreciate when this happens, and I've talked to my girlfriend about how she feels about these things. She told me what I do is enough for her, and the only thing that matters is that we are happy. There's a friend of hers who literally just won't shut up about me being the housewife, her exact words. She always passive-aggressively makes remarks about my income, and things about a man should care for his girlfriend. Since she usually does this in front of other people, I don't say anything because I hate making scenes in public, so I usually stay silent. We had a small get-together with some of me and my girlfriend's friends, and she was invited. The first thing she commented on was the decor in our house. She then smirked and asked if I was the one who paid for it or my girlfriend. My girlfriend gave me this look like, I'm sorry, and that really just set me off. After everyone came in, I asked her to come to the front door. When we got there, I asked her to put on her shoes. She asked where we were going, and I told her she was leaving because I'm not dealing with her stupid bull right now. She said it's not up to me since I didn't pay for the house, and I told her I would make sure she would have zero fun if she decided to stay. She said her boyfriend dropped her off and that she didn't have a ride, and I told her to go Uber or something. She left and some people started asking me where she was. I just said she had to go because something came up. But my girlfriend's friends didn't take the story because they overheard what she had said to me and guessed that I kicked her out. I just told them what happened, and they started berating me for kicking her out over nothing, and that if I was a real man, the thing she said shouldn't bother me. What hell does that even mean? My girlfriend is indifferent to the situation, but my girlfriend's friends don't seem to understand that it's freaking annoying to have to deal with that every time I see her. I feel conflicted, and maybe I shouldn't have kicked her out. Am I the a-hole? Not today, home. But I'm concerned your girlfriend is only indifferent instead of being on your side. OP, you really need to stand up for yourself in a more direct approach. The way you handled things with your slime manner backfired. I'm not calling you an a-hole, but kicking her out and giving everyone else a different story was not making you look good. It gave her the opportunity to control the narrative, not that you have anything to prove to anyone. Additionally, you should have stopped her insults from the get-go. I understand it's challenging to do so in a group setting, but that seems humiliating to just take it in front of others. Just say it's rude and tell her to stop in front of everyone. Not today, home, but your girlfriend is. Nobody should be disrespected by guests in their own home. Girlfriend should have shut this down the first time it happened. Your masculinity is not an issue. Your dignity and privacy are. Girlfriend should not allow her friends to mistreat the man she loves. Not today, home. I think you handled it beautifully, right down to saying she had to go. You may not have a lot of money, but you have a ton more class than anyone else in the story. I'm sorry that your girlfriend doesn't actively help you to remedy the situation. To be fair to her, these are all her childhood friends, and she has told me before that they are basically family. I especially wouldn't take that crap from family either. If my own mother said something insulting to my significant other, she'd be heading home. Last story is titled, Am I the a-hole for kicking out my significant other for being replaced on vacation? I, 33 female, have been with my boyfriend, 55 male, for three years, Carl, and he has always been mortified by our age gap. Carl is worried that he will be seen as a sad old man or that people will think I'm a gold digger. I, on the other hand, am unbothered. We both work in finance, and although Carl makes more than me, I make six-figure salary and I'm self-supporting. He is currently staying with me for a couple of weeks as he lives a couple of states away. He has his own place, but we usually stay together one week a month minimum. Until the last six months or so, Carl refused to introduce me to anyone he knew, including his teenage-slash-adult children, but I tolerated it because I assumed he was just cautious and would come around in the long run. Recently, a friend of his, George, 50s male, 
who I have worked with for the past four years and therefore know fairly well, had a couple of friends drop out of a holiday he had booked last year, a villa in Antigua, and ask if Carl wanted to go. As part of his invite, George told Carl he could bring a friend. It's important to note at this point that George is one of the few people that Carl has actually confided in about our long-term relationship. We have met for supper before as a couple, so I am 99% sure George was referring to me. Carl asked me if I wanted to go, and I was thrilled, as I felt like it was a major turning point in our relationship and that he was finally publicly acknowledging me. The next day, Carl calls me and tells me that he'd spoken to George, and it transpired that George wasn't bringing friends, as Carl had thought, but instead his five adult children, 20s, plus their boyfriends slash girlfriends. Carl decided that this wouldn't be my scene, and informed me that he'd ask his son Ed, 18 male, to go instead of me. I was incandescent and told him to get the hell out. He has been texting me since, telling me I'm blowing it out of proportion and that I wouldn't enjoy it anyway, as it is mostly kids. You are five years younger than me, so am I the a-hole for kicking him out for being disinvited from the holiday? Edit. Carl and I started dating not long after his divorce, which is why he was initially reluctant to introduce me. As far as I know, there are no skeletons in Carl's closet. Not an a-hole. Blowing out of proportion? You know what's out of proportion? A 55-year-old guy who is so insecure and scared for the judgment of others. So he tries to hide his girlfriend for three years. Are you sure he is not cheating or something? I think he lacks a lot of commitment. He lives out of town. They see each other one week each month. They've been dating for three years and he refuses to acknowledge her to his family and friends. Sounds like dude already has a family and Opie isn't it. Jesus, Opie, why would you put up with this? Seriously, he's so ashamed if he keeps you secret and you happily go along with it. For three years? Damn, where's your self-esteem? Your pride? I'm thinking that divorce never actually happened and Opie is an unknowing side piece. Why are you dating someone who's ashamed of you? You're the a-hole for wasting your time with someone that is embarrassed to be dating you. Three years you've been his dirty little secret. Get some self-respect.